In 2025, you don't need Unity to build awesome games like these. Just Flutter and Flame. I'm going to show you how this powerful game library works, step by step. We'll explore how to animate sprites, handle imputes, trigger collisions, and even build your first game. So buckle up. No seatbelt needed, just Curiosity and Flutter installed. Let's dive in. Before we can build anything, we need to install Flame. Just open up your terminal and run Flutter pub add flame. This adds flame to your project dependencies. Then make sure everything is up to date by running Flutter pub get. And that's it. Flame is now part of your project. With Flame installed, let's talk about how this game engine actually works. Well, Flame is built around something called the component system. Every object in your game, such as player, an enemy, the background, is a component. This is a smart way to organize game objects, making everything easier to manage, especially as the game grows. In fact, one important feature of the component system is that you can add components to other components. Every Flame game starts with a class that extends Flame game. This is the core of your game. It controls the game loop and manages all the components. Ideally, you'd want to add all your game components, like your player, directly into this flame game component. But instead of adding them directly to the flame game, the cleaner and more scalable approach is to use a world component. This is because the world component allows us to attach one or more camera components that can look at or observe the world. Cameras can follow your player, zoom in or out, and even shake the screen during explosions. None of that is possible if you skip the world. Now, how do you actually create game objects? Flame gives you powerful building blocks, but you only need to understand these three to start building amazing games. The position component, which is used to create game objects with a position and size. Sprite component, which lets you display an image, and the sprite animation component, which can be used to create animated game objects. And with just these, you can already build rich interactive games. But before we dive into using them, we need to talk about something even more important. The game loop. This is what makes your game feel alive. It is the engine that is constantly updating and redrawing everything on the screen. Flame automatically calls four key methods on your component. The onload function, which runs first and is perfect for loading assets or setting defaults. The unmount function runs once the component is fully in the game tree. The update function runs every frame where the game logic happens. And finally, the render function, which draws the current state to the screen. To keep it simple, the update function updates your data and render displays it. Now, the fun part. How do we make our games interactive? Let's start with input. In Flame, input is handled through simple mixings. Want to respond to tabs? Just add tab callbacks. Need drag support? Use drag callback. From there, you can override methods like on tap down and on tap up to define what happens when the player interacts. Dragging works the same way you get access to on drag start on drag update and on drag end letting you track finger movements and the best part you can combine them tap to select drag to move just like a real card game let's talk collisions the moment two game objects meet and something interesting happens these moments drive the rules and feedback in your game flame makes this simple with built-in support just use mixings like has collision detection and add a rectangle hitbox or a circle hitbox to your components to define their boundaries you can then override methods like on collision start or on collision to decide what happens when collision occurs. It's not just about realism. Collision detection is about feedback. It gives your game that responsive feel. Combined with input events, it makes every interaction feel deliberate. Beyond collision and input handling, animated feedback plays a vital role in making games feel satisfying and polished. In Flame, effects are modular add-ons that animate your component. You can move, scale, rotate, fade, or combine these to create stylish feedback. Effects are easy to trigger and fully integrated in Flame's component system. Add the right mixing, call it in code, and you're done. When combined with input and collision handling, these effects make every interaction feel crisp, responsive, and fun. At the core of every Flame project is the game widget, the bridge between your game and Flutter's UI system. It's responsible for rendering, handling inputs, and running the updates loop that powers animations, effects, and game logic. That's why your game class gets wrapped in a game widget and launched from your main function. It's the entry point to your game. And because it's just a widget, you can embed it anywhere in a Flutter 
Flutter app. Building a science app for kids and want to drop a mini game into one of the screens, Game Widgets makes that easy. Debug mode is one of the most valuable tools in Flame for developing and debugging. When enabled, it overlays real-time diagnostics directly onto your game. Bounding boxes, anchor points, collision shapes, and component positions all become visible. This makes it easy to spot misaligned layouts, incorrect hitboxes, and other bugs. Enabling it is simple. Just override the debug mode boolean and set it to true. Before we jump into a bonus tip on making your game lock on landscape mode by default, let's take a brief look at organizing your assets. By default, this goes into an assets folder at the root of your project. Don't forget to register these folders in your popspec.yaml file. Now to the bonus tip. You see, there is one small detail that can have a big impact in preventing annoying bugs and that is setting the default orientation. Just add this to the unload method in the game class. For iOS, confirm that your info.p list supports multiple orientations. If it doesn't, just add the code on the screen. Earlier, I mentioned you can start building interactive games with the basics covered in this video. Click the video on your screen to see it in action. And we've only scratched the surface. Audio, menus and more are coming. Drop a comment with what you want to see next. I'm picking three requests from the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video.